All right, welcome back, everybody. It's going to be a recap for uh, my trades today, July 13, 2023. These are all the trades that I made in our live trading room this morning and in the afternoon. If you were watching our recap last night, one thing I mentioned, I was coming in long overnight, carrying a position long overnight on the Mini Russell. Also had a short on natural gas. So let's look and see how these trades uh, ended up because I did exit today. So we had a, what we call an ATF3, this is a pattern buy on uh, the Mini Russell, came in. Uh, this one actually came in pretty early in the morning, came around 8.45. Uh, and I held this through the whole day, had a stop down here, got close, but never hit a stop. Once again, I'm looking for this profit target up here at the head, all right? And you can see we went through the middle of the night. And this is the nighttime session coming over here, just after 4, after 4.15. Came in and we finally hit it. Uh, it was about um, 15, 20 minutes after the opening bell. So we did hit profit target exit, took profit on the mini Russell. We did the same thing basically on, on natural gas. We don't need to go through that, but I will show you the results on that. Uh, let's take a look at some of our stocks that we also traded this morning. All right, so let's take a look at our stocks. This is going to be the uh, the losing stock because it was the very first one I took this morning on DFLI. We'll look at my uh, watch list here in just a minute. But uh, anyway, I did have an entry buy here. I can't remember. This was the HF. I didn't put it down. If I don't put it down, I don't remember. But it was e either an HF2 or 3. I can't remember. It may have been H1. I don't know. Anyway, I did have buy entry. This was my very first target. I did have some higher targets. Unfortunately, even before the opening, it, it collapsed. I went ahead and got out, did not re-enter. I don't really like to re-enter unless the market's been going up. And and I don't like to re-enter usually with any trade. Typically, if I'm in a trade and I'm making money on it, I'll get out. And then that'll be it for the day. All right. Um, but there are going to be cases sometimes when I may get out. And uh, maybe lose a little bit, but the market's still strong. Maybe I got out prematurely. I'll come back in, but very seldom, good rule of thumb is typically in the morning after the opening bell, if I have a profit, I usually don't like to trade it anymore. But in this case, that wasn't even an issue because I didn't even get to the opening bell and I took a loss on DFLI. Uh, the next trade, uh, let's see here. Next trade coming in was EYPT. EYPT. Let me show you EYPT. All right, so EYPT was also on our morning scan. Uh, this particular buy was an HF1 buy on EYPT. Or I uh, entered here uh, around 11, 11, 30, past 11.30, I know, on EYPT. So it certainly was on the opening. Didn't have any setups with EYPT on the opening, but we were watching it. We did finally get triggered for an HF1. I did have um, two levels. Uh, and I went ahead and once we penetrated level number two here, I went ahead and I got out. I got out here when it was starting to pull back. I always like to wait to see if it's going to go start running farther. In this case, it did. But hey, that's okay. I went ahead, took my profit, made nice, nice little money on EYPT. So let's take a look at our overall results. All right, here's the overall results um, for the uh, the natural gas. $84.201 on the uh, on the Mini Russell. Uh, once again, those were carryovers from the prior day. You see, got in on 7.12. Man, I got out <coughs> today on the 13th on both of them. I was short uh, the natural gas, and I came in long on the Mini Russell. Did not have any other trades. Didn't see anything on gold. And uh, there's a few uh, trades that came in late in the afternoon on the NSCs. I didn't take them. Um, so anyway, um, also typically most of your really best moves are going to be first thing in the morning. So I like to get in on these, uh, in this, particularly the indices, I like to get on the indices fairly early in the morning and catch those morning runners. So, um, okay. So then on the stocks, uh, once again, this was the morning, uh, watch list up here. Didn't have a whole lot of stocks on the morning watch list. Had a lot more in the afternoon for, um, the power hour. Uh, you can see EYPT, I traded EYPT, DFLI. Uh, uh, DFLI was, um, on the, um, was on the morning watch list, but 
EY, let's see, EYPT was not on the morning watch list, but it did come in later on after I posted this. So I took an EY, uh, EYPT, but uh, the afternoon trade, the only afternoon trade was on UTME, UT, UTME, and that was on my, uh, I thought it was on this afternoon, yeah, it was on the afternoon, it was on the top of the chart here on the uh, the afternoon watch list so once again i do put out these watch lists every morning now these watch lists are arrived through uh, um, uh several processes um so in other words i'll run it through the scan i have some actually I have two scanners two scanners uh, a little bit different parameters uh and they both have to see i have to see correlation between the two so in other words both every one of these stocks showed up on both scanners and uh, the scan in the afternoon a little bit different than the scan in the morning. A little bit tighter in the morning, uh, not quite as tight in the afternoon. But uh, most of your better trades are going to be first thing in the morning. So um, I prefer to have a lot less options in the morning than more. Uh, and then the other thing is when I'm looking at this, I'm also looking to see that each one of these I have to make sure that I have more than um, you know, more than one pattern set enough. So I have to have two and more all pointing in the same direction. If I'm going to buy or sell, once once that is the case, it's a pretty simple process. It's just a matter of following the pattern. Pattern tells me specifically where I'm going to get in, specifically where I'm going to get out, and then Einstein is going to provide me with these levels over here, these green levels, and uh, you know I can have up to sometimes have all four of them, all four patterns setting up, and then a lot of times what happen is or have maybe two patterns, and then. As I'm waiting for the other two patterns to hit, then we get it another two or three. And so I can have multiple levels building on top of itself. So it's kind of cool. So anyway, um, but usually I'm not going to touch anything if it's just one level. I like to see more than two levels. Each one of these are kind of like magnets. And if you watch the video on, on Einstein and, and how it was designed back in the eighties, you understand that it's, it's a really cool approach to, to trading that's different than, uh, than what you're used to. It's not something that's publicly available. It's something that, that was uh, designed. Actually, I didn't design it. It was designed by a very successful trader back in the 80s. And um, he was a scalper, strictly a day trader. And uh, he shared it with me. And then I just incorporated it into my patterns. All right. And it's, that's, that's how I arrived at uh, this approach to trading, which has been not only around for uh, 35 years now, but also the beauty of what we do here is these patterns work, which you can, can't say with a lot of um, tools that are on the market, is it works across the board in everything, all right? So a particular pattern, HF1 pattern, I could use it in stock, I can use it in commodity, I can use it in crypto, it doesn't matter um, because all the patterns are solid across the board. That gives you not only the confidence, to continue to trade but the pattern each one of them gives me a probability so I know what my probabilities are which allows me then to manage my size because I know what the probabilities are all right and it's pretty solid across the board on the probabilities and um, and it's been that way for 35 years so I, the patterns are solid and really what makes them more so than that is um, very few things can you say that you can use it across the board in different instruments, okay? Um, most people that find patterns are looking for patterns that maybe work in one market. When I'm saying a pattern, I'm talking about the combination of price bars. I'm not talking about typical breakout patterns. I don't use support and resistance, so I'm not looking at breakouts. I'm not using any kind of a penance, head and shoulders, those kinds of things. It's These patterns are very unique. It's a combination of how these bars are formed and it takes into account open, high, low, close and opening on several bars. And once I see that particular pattern set up, then that's what's gonna give me an indication of whether the market's gonna continue to go up or down. It's kind of like the alphabet, okay? Each bar is telling us something about the market and then, you know, it's like scrambled letters, right? And then every once in a while, it's going to spell out a nice little word. And that's kind of the way it works. Once, once I see that indication, once I see that nice little combination, I know I have really high probability that it's going to move in my favor 
So um, anyway, if you'd like to learn more about my approach to trading, same one I've been using for 35 years, uh, and I have been trading for 40 years, so I've been around for a long time, and uh, I know these markets very well, and um, and I've taught a lot of people to become very successful traders, um, and this is not some, you know, humble, that's why I like to trade in front of people. It's the only reason I do it. It's not something that uh, would necessarily enjoy trading in front of people. But I want to show uh, everybody that there's a different approach to trading that uh, is a little bit more sound, has a little bit more logic behind it, instead of just drawing a line on the chart. All right. There is a logic behind everything. Every single one of these patterns, there's a reason why they work. Just like Einstein, very solid um, reason why Einstein has the high probability and predictability that it does, as each one of these patterns do. All right, so very few things in trading can you say that. And the other most important thing is simplicity. If you're trading, you want to make your trading as simple as, as possible, meaning that you don't want to have to make a lot of decisions. The, less, the least amount of decisions you have to make, the more likely you're going to be successful and the more likely you're going to stick to whatever approach you're using. If you have a bunch of stuff on your, a bunch of indicators and stuff on your chart, and you're listening to the news, you can listen to all this other stuff, you're going to be so confused, you're not going to know what you're doing. And, um, and it's just, it's just two way stressful. Most people can't make it. And in cases like that, in most cases, putting things on top of each other, layering things that, uh, what I call, they're basically like, um, they're like spark plugs. I mean, you're putting something, people think if you use a combination of indicators, it gives you more probability. I like to use the analogy that if a, uh, an indicator, a single indicator is kind of like a spark plug. If you cannot make money just using that one indicator, okay, what makes you think that by putting a combination of indicators that don't hold on by themselves, all of a sudden are going to create magic for you and by putting them together, all of a sudden you're going to have, you know, a winning system. It's like putting a dead spark plug into a car and it and saying, well, it's not running right, so I'm going to put more dead spark plugs into the car and it's going to run better. So I'm really trying to get people to start thinking logically about what they're doing when they're trading. You're not just jumping into it. Um, don't just start using indicators. And if you do have an indicator before you start trading it, Make sure whatever that parameter is that you're using, make sure you can use it. First of all, it shouldn't be something that you change. But if you have to change it, whatever the indicator may be, it should work in every market that you trade. All right. So if you find a great set of uh, combination of some sort of um, indicators that you like, whatever that combination is, and you're saying, hey, if this works great in the E-mini S&P, then... Uh, Check it out. Make sure it works in bonds. Uh, get really crazy. Go into, look at pork bellies, look at cattle, look at gold, silver, uh, look at forex market, look at some stocks. All right. If it doesn't hold up, that would be something I would want to be trading because what you'll find is if it can hold up in all markets, it's not going to hold up in that market. Okay. Because someday, I always say someday that E mini uh, S and P, all those indicators that have been working really well for you on that E mini S and P, all of a sudden the E mini S and P may start to act like a treasury bond. Okay, so I'm being kind of humorous, but you understand what I'm saying. The way the markets flow, the way the volatility is, things change, and those changes can throw everything off. So whatever you have should be adaptable to all types of markets. All right, so you can learn more about it if you go to my uh, YouTube channel. Innovative Trading Strategies or my website, Innovative Trading Strategies.com. And please join us every morning. We do this right now. It's 30 minutes in the morning. It's open to everybody. And after that, then we continue on our Discord uh, channel and uh, we continue to trade, trade live with our Discord members. That's it. Everybody have a good night. And we'll see you on Friday, tomorrow, first thing. And um, hopefully, we'll have a good day. Being it is a Friday. All right, take care.